Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh Bashem, I was shy, by Hashem Rakadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to the hundred and forty four thousand and the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be among the heathen that look like the heathen, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming at you another lesson in truth. And uh this is just a background, um, just to kind of get the, the feel and the of what was going on in this time, even though this is a time of the Moors, um, you know. Uh, but we're gonna talk about King David here. And I'm gonna read uh probably all of Second Samuel, the eighth chapter. Because people have no clue of what's about to happen in the earth. And um and the Israelites, it's the time that the time of the Gentiles is almost up. And the time of the Israelites are going to be uh, established. And King David is going to sit on the throne again. It was perfect that that image popped up at the moment. And these, and, and just for the for the record too, these Moors uh, were not Africans. These were Israelites, right? The Moors were uh, were Africans, I mean, were, were Israelites, not Africans, that accepted Islam, all right? And you can look the word up. When you look up uh, the word Moreno, in the uh, on the online entomology dictionary, it's going to tell you that it was a Moor or a Jew. All right, goddamn commercial, boy, I hate fucking Esau. All right, but it was a it was a Moor or a Jew. All right, then they put two commercials. Boy, I tell you, just disturb disturbance after disturbance. Turn it off. All right, but um. But nevertheless, we'll we'll pause it right there. You can clearly see the Negroid features, the braids, the the uh, the cornrows on these images. All right, but uh, let's go to uh, Samuel. Yeah, I've been reading First and Second Samuel over and over again, but this is a uh, and every time I read it, it's just more and more, and the, the stories are amazing. But this is Second Samuel, the eighth chapter. And it reads, And it came, and after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methagama out of the hand of the Philistines. Philist Palestinian is the modern way that you say Philistines, except they're not the same people. The Palestinians are Ishmael. Ishmael um, is not native to that land. The The Philistines were indeed uh, Africans, Hamites, all right, uh, sons of Ham. You know, and Esau always tries to control the narrative, the narrative and show them as white or Arab, you know, um, because just like the scripture says, they, they have parted the land in Joel. So, the, you know, so the main people in, in the Holy Land and in that area um, from Egypt to to uh, uh you know, to Palestine, to Jerusalem, is Ishmael and and uh, and Edom. All right, neither one of them. Are, uh, that land doesn't belong to them. That land belongs to the to to the Israelites who are not there collectively. There's a small handful of Israelites there, and they're actually going against the word of of Yahweh, against the word of God. They're not. You were not supposed to go on the, over there on their own. That's why they mistreated and got them living out by down by nuclear uh, 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 stations. All right. OK, so it says us uh, verse two and he and he smote Moab and measured them with the line, casting them down to the ground, even with two lines measured. He put to death and with one full line, he kept alive. And also the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. So David, who, who was a man after the, own, the Lord's heart, where well, he was put to death and conquering all these nations around. All right. It says David smote. Also had a Desir, the son of Rehob, king of Zeboah, Zeboa, and he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand, took with him a thousand chariots, 700 horsemen, 20,000 footmen. David hawed all the chariot ho uh, horses, but reserved of them for a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to Sakar, Hadass Dezer, the king of Zobah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. 
Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought gifts, and Yahweh preserved David whithersoever he went. So the Lord was given to Israel through David and his mighty men and his army gave us, uh, uh, basically the world was created for our sakes. That's the scriptures and precepts that I'm going to read. But this is just showing you to show you that the Lord, and, and you know, he changes not. Okay. And it says, um, and David took the shields of gold uh, of the servants of Had, uh, had a deezer, a deezer and, and brought them to Jerusalem and from Bata and from uh, Barothai cities of Hadadezer, King David took exceedingly much brass. When Toy, king of Hamath, heard David had smitten all the hosts of Hadad, Hadadezer, Dezer, then Toy sent Jer, uh, Jeram, his son, unto David, king, unto King David, to salute him and bless him because he had fought against Hadadezer and smitten him. For Hadadezer had wars with Toy. And Jerom brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass, which also King David did dedicate unto Yahweh. And with silver and gold, he had dedicated it all. And he had dedicated of all the nation which he subdued, all right, of Syria and of Moab and of the children of Ammon and the Philistines and Amalek. That will be the, you know, the, the, uh, the small hats that are over in our land today, the chief house of, 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 of Esau. And then you notice these are the same names of the nations that came against the Lord and against the Lord's people in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter. All right. The very same people. This is why they changed and hit our history. I was just looking at a video that some clown put up that showed, you know, Hamites dancing around in mud huts, you know, as if that was all how Africa was. There were castles in Africa. You got to remember these same Moors that, that uh, were living in Africa that built up uh, Portugal and Spain. So all those wonderful buildings that people come to, palaces that people come to see today were built by the very men that you see on this screen. All right. And they did the same thing in Africa. All right. They were all through North Africa castles and in West Africa. You know, through wars and through time, Esau have torn them down. He don't he just don't show them. He leaves them out of history. All right. But their books that show these things. But back into the uh, chapter, it says, uh, I'm, I mean, uh, chapter, uh, I mean, uh, verse verse 12, of Syria and Moab and of the children of Ammon and the Philistines and of Amalek and the spoil of uh, Hadadizer, son of Rohab, king of Zobah. And King David got him a name when he returned from smiting the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men. And he put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom, he put garrisons. And, all, and they of Edom became David's servants. And Yahweh preserved David wheresoever he went. And David reigned over all Israel. And David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. All right. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the hosts. And Jehoshaphat, and the son of Al, Al, Al Ahilud, was the, was recorder and Zadok the son of Ahitub and and Ahimelech the son of Abathar with the priests and and Seriah was the scribe and and Benaniah the son of jo Jehodiah was over well, was was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites and David's son were chief sons, were chief rulers. So David and his Israelites were ruling over all the, 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 the known world at that time. They had control and power. Okay. Now, and so David, you know, literally, you know, ran the blood, blood ran, ran off David's sword and spear, all in the name of the Lord. That's why it tells you in Exodus, he is a, uh, uh, Yahweh is his name. He's a man. That's good. Get it. Exodus 15 and 3. And it reads. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. He said that David is a man after his own heart. Let's go to Acts uh, 22. 
for x uh, th 3 and 22. Yep, it says, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A trumpet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me, he shall... No, that's not it. He says he's a man after his own heart. It's Acts 13. Where is that video? Where is that scripture? That's not it. Yep, it's Acts 13, not 3, Salakia. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. The him was he, he removed Saul, all right? And it says, and he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart which shall fulfill my will. So the Lord's will was to put to death all these nations to build up his chosen people. And the same thing, and that's why they try to discredit the bloodline of the Lord and make him a virgin birth and, and discredit the, the, the sperm line that he came from, which was out of the line of David. Uh, that's in Isaiah 11 chapter. Um, verse one, it says, and there shall be a, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. All right. Jumping down to verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign to the people to which shall the Gentiles seek and the rest shall be glorious. Those Gentiles are the scattered Israelites among the heathen that look like the heathen. All right. It says, uh, and then the rest of the scattered Israel. It says there, and it shall come to pass in that day, the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, the elect. This is what this is all about. Which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Those are all different people. They're different shades of brown, different races of people. The Israelites are among them all. So when I say among the heathen that look like the heathen, that is exactly 144% truth. All right. So um, let's go to Amos now because you can't have the kingdom of heaven without the house of David being set up again to do the same thing. We're going to smash on the other nations and bring them under subjection. So on earth as it is in heaven, just like in the Lord's prayer, the Lord's will, his will, it, it, it shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right. And then there will be peace on earth. This is how you know that the people in the land of Israel are not the people. Because all the nations aren't bowing down to them and following the ways of God. Following the ways of the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible of Yahweh Bashem Now Shai. All right? They're doing all manner of wickedness, you know, over there in the land. All right? But this is Amos 9 and 11. I'm going to read through 15. And it reads, And in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, meaning Edom is still here. You can't have the kingdom of heaven without Edom still being here. Edom is not the so-called black man. So it's now, now all of a sudden, or, or somebody that, that is black. You got some dumbass Israelites out there pushing that false doctrine, all right? Edom is the Lord returns to a world ruled by Edom, all right? The so-called white man rules this world because the, the, the Western powers are fallen, which is ruled over by, by white men. But the but the uh, the Eastern powers are raising up. And even though you got China in there, Russia is at the brunt of that. All right. So it's still the world. The Lord returns to a world ruled by Edom. All right. During World War Three. All right. Edom is the ruling class people still here on Earth. Point blank, period. When the scripture says the, the, the first shall be last and the last shall be first, white people are still first in this society. And although that's changing rapidly every day, that's why so many of them are complaining. All right. And they're mad and they're frustrated because what they're complaining about, so-called Negroes, for the most part, 
And the majority of the so-called Hispanics have been living this way all along. All right. Whiteness is not this this false this false uh, social construct of whiteness isn't isn't a protection to them anymore. Now, all of a sudden, it's us and we the 99 percenters and all that. All right. But when they were benefiting from that false social construct, they could care less that you were struggling. All right. Now, they're the ones on drugs and their women are killing their babies and turning on them and sleeping with, with the other nations. You know, they're going through what we the curses are now falling upon them. All right. But back into Amos, the ninth chapter, uh, verse 13. Behold, the day shall come, saith Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of the grapes, him that sowed the seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all of the hills shall melt. Hills represent nations. All right. Hills and mountains represent great nations and small nations. And the reaper, all right, is going to overtake the, I mean, the plowman is going to overtake the reaper. We've been the plowman. Working for nothing, they've been reaping all the benefits. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. That's what happens when the Lord comes back. So, you, so He gonna set uh, white people up again? No, they've had the time, and their time is up. This is it. Uh, verse fourteen, and I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink wine thereof. And they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. So basically, after America's destroyed, the Israelites are, uh, are, are beamed up to safety unto the chariots of Israel. That's what the char chariots of Israel are all about. He maketh the clouds his chariots. They're not aliens. Those are the chariots of the Lord. Those are angels inside of that so-called big black man. You got different in, uh, agents from NASA who have admitted that. And now they're trying to all of a sudden admit that they're real. But now they want to make them aliens. Right. Because why? Because with their help and with the, when King David returns into the flesh, you know, and, and we're given that new and after the destroyer comes who the world called ignorantly and fraudulently called Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai comes back. All right. Then he's going to set his his elect, the one hundred forty four thousand, his X-Men with those new bodies and powers, unstoppable powers. Well, they won't even need weapons. The weapons are just going to be for show, for aesthetics, because it looks cool. But they won't even need them. It's in Psalms 2 and 8. And it reads, well, I'm going to start at verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? All these people in these Christian churches. Christianity is is is, is a made-up religion, a 5013C3 charter uh, religion, just like the business it's in, a, in, a, in a cults. You know, just like the uh, uh, it's occultism, the 501c3 charter is nothing but big business. It's just they corporations. That's why they, they have to teach a prescribed doctrine and not and not teach the truth. All right. Does it benefit this society for people to learn the truth? They want to keep their citizens dumbed down and ignorant. All right. Um, uh, Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possessions. We're going to come down off those chariots and take over the rest of the world, earth that has not been destroyed throughout the nuclear fire. America is going to be destroyed by the nuclear fire, by all the arrows that are going to fly from one end of the earth to the other. The, the day that burns with fervent heat that's going to melt the elements, that melt their, you know, their, their tongues and their mouths and their eyes and their eye sockets. That what's going to melt concrete and steel? Mountains and water and rivers away, all right. The fire coming from 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 those ICBMs, which the Lord is going to take over, and the concentrated fire coming from the heavens, from the chariots, all right. Just like just like in Sodom and Gomorrah, all right. Because the world was made for our sakes, and the Lord is getting ready to give it back. He's getting ready to come down here, declare war on the on Esau, Edom, and the rest of the heathen. Even the two thirds of our people have to die on this side. They're going to be born back on the other side. All right. To the to those of us who make it. To the to the hundred forty four thousand and the elect. All right. And the majority of the uh, uh, the elect are going to be women and children. Those women are going to be the wives of the hundred and forty four thousand It's going to be their job and their duty to bring back all those billions of our people that died at two thirds. All right. With the majority, not the minority. That's the lot of Esau Edom has pushed. 
you put the Negro, Latino, Native American together, we outnumber all races on the earth. Then to me, then you then you count in the uh, the uh, the 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 innumerable multitude among the heathens that look like the heathens, and he's gonna gather his elect from out of them. I've read it like three times already. All right, so we can't be counted, and you can't identify us by color. All right, but this is Second Ezra six and fifty five. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at uh, 54, point in 55. But it says, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord over all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people who thou hast chosen. The Israelites are the chosen people, point blank, period. And they're not, they're not you know, although some of us look like, you know, so-called white people, they're not white people. They never were. All right. Like I always tell you, you know, these pale people, you were not the Greeks. You were not you were not the Romans. I mean, you you were you 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 became the Greeks and the Romans. But I tell you, you were not the Brits. You were you were not the uh, uh the Scots, you were not the Irish. All right? You were none of those things. You became those things. All right? Fraudulently and falsely after the fact. And it says, and after this. Have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The world was made for the Negro, Latino, Native American, collectively. Those of, and, and, and then, you know, and then our, our scattered elected are scattered among the heathen. And, it, and verse 56, as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. So don't forget what, what God made us all. He had the chosen people. He just told you. Right. As for the other people whom thou, uh, as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. You know, you spit, and has likened the abundance of them, all those billions of people, unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. In Isaiah 40, 40 and fifteen, he said that they are they are as nothing. They count the least of the dust of the balance. You know, like you go to weigh something, you put some meat or something or anything on the scale to measure it. And you blow the dust off first, that's the other billions of people. They matter not to the Lord. All right? The truth is harsh and brutal. Call Halal Yahweh by Shinawashai by Shemra Karkwadash and Wa'ababa Ball Kwam Yasharala Shalawam.